You might be waiting for something to change. You might be waiting for something to happen, a miracle, a blessing, anything for you to actually change and do something. But honey, nothing is going to happen. If you do not decide to take control and to actually change something in your life, nothing is going to change. Nobody is coming to save you. And honestly, nobody's obligated to save you. Not your mom, not your sister, not your brothers, not your father. No one is. No one owes you that. You owe it to yourself to actually get up and do something about your life. It's even funny to think that an external source should help you or save you when you don't even care enough about yourself to do that for yourself. I was that person once. I had a victim mindset. I thought that somebody needed to come and save me until I actually changed things about my mindset and my life completely changed. In this video, I will show you how you can change your life and what you actually need to do. So please keep watching. Hi guys, my name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. Let's get right into it. So first thing you need to do is realize your own self-sabotages. Self-sabotage can look like, for example, you're not willing to accept help. You don't uh, accept even compliments for, from people. Um, you isolate yourself constantly you abandon people or you create something before they hurt you because you don't want to get hurt you have to realize what are my self-sabotaging behaviors for me what my biggest self-sabotage was i had very low self-worth so in that case i became like i would accept anything that anyone does to me because i had no boundaries and I, I i did not feel worthy enough to stick up for myself I didn't value my own life. I literally could not care if tomorrow I was not alive anymore. Honestly, I think I would have been happier if I was not alive anymore. So in that mindset, I was like, well, whatever. Like, I don't care about myself. So if someone treats me badly, I'll accept it because I don't care anyway. So what happened for me, I tended to attract people that started to use me, abuse me, things like that, because I would just allow it to happen. That's the only thing I knew my whole life. So for me, it was normal. It was comfortable until I actually was like, wait a minute. I can actually say, no, you are not allowed to treat me like that. You will not treat me like that. These are my boundaries. You will not cross them. And when I, when I realized that I can actually say that, my life changed and the way people treated me changed. I read a quote recently that said, uh, you do not attract toxic people. Toxic people go to everyone. You are just allowing them to stay and that's the issue. That is so true because they, they're not picky. Toxic people are not picky. They will go to anyone who is ready to like uh, put, pull them in. So if you're ready to nurture toxic people, if you have very low self-worth, they will latch on to you. All these toxic people, narcissists, everyone, they will latch on to you because you're easy for them. You're, you're a victim for them. Really look at yourself and think, okay, in what ways do I sabotage myself even when I have a healthy relationship, right? Like uh, right now, I have a very healthy relationship in my life and it's been so hard for me. I had to work on this for almost a year now where I had to literally be okay with peace and be okay with a good person. Because even my partner, he would constantly tell me like, Liz, I know that you grew up in an environment where abuse and fights was normal, but he's like, I'm not willing to give that to you because I would create fights with him because that's what I wanted. I wanted that, like what was comfortable for me, what I knew all my life, like someone to fight with me. And then I could say, look, look, you're the same. You're exactly like everyone. But he was not willing to give that to me. He's like a very calm and stable person. Doesn't fight with me. It's always very respectful. So then I was like, whoa, this is really hard for me to accept someone that does not hurt me. But then I could really look at myself and I could realize, whoa, I am sabotaging myself so much because somebody is willing to give me love, respect, and I am like, no, hurt me in some way, you know? So I really had to work on that. And now that I did work on it, I can, with all my relationships, I can, my friendships, anyone that I meet, anyone, I can be like, 
hey listen these are my boundaries do not cross me another thing uh what i realized when i got out of my uh, abusive household was what you have been taught is not a fact what you have been taught your whole life is just what your parents have been taught by their parents and they have been taught by their parents and it goes a whole long way but those are not facts those are their beliefs with their lives that they have lived and learned from the people that have lived the same way but it's not bad or wrong for you to choose a different direction because what they told you that is right is what was right for them but you know generations change the world changes N nothing stays the same and we have to evolve as well we cannot stay in with a generational mindset from so many years ago and take it into this world and just have that same mindset because you will not be able to thrive because other people have evolved they are already going further and further with their mindset and you will be stuck in a mindset that's maybe from the 1800s 1900s like it's an old mindset so realize that as well what you have been taught is not a fact so when i realized okay the people around me are also people my parents are people these are also flawed human beings the same as me who went through life through trauma learning stuff and they're still learning till this day even my mom like she completely changed my mindset when i changed my mindset and now even i can teach her things i'm like mom don't you think this is this way and our communication became so much better and so much more open-minded because she's willing actually to learn and to listen oh okay so nothing is a fact everyone is speaking from their experience i am also speaking from my experience even the advice i give it will not be the same for everyone in your life because you guys did not live my life and you cannot apply it the same way but take what resonates and that can actually help you and apply it how it works in your life so start to look at people and think okay what they are telling me is what they think and they believe is fact based on their reality but i do not have to take that fact for myself I can also look at that thing that they're saying from my point of view, from my reality and have an opinion about it. Realize that you create your own reality. I was so astonished when I found out that my life is not set. It doesn't have to be this way. When I could actually when I realized that I could actually th change things about my life and I could control what happens or who I choose as a partner or, or whatever I decide to do in my life, I could choose, I had decisions, I was shocked. Because my whole life I was told, no, it's this way and you will follow this way. But when I actually stepped out of that mindset and I was like, it doesn't have to be this way. I do not have to suffer this way. I do not have to go through what my parents go through. I could do things differently that's when life started to open up for me that's when i became so successful because i started to actually trust my own judgment because i started to see like wow liz the decisions that you make are actually good and are actually bringing you further than any of these things that people have told you your whole life so that way i started to trust myself more i became confident in my abilities in my own decisions and i started to realize it doesn't have to be this way. I can change things for myself. It doesn't matter where I come from. It doesn't matter how hard my life was. I can change it around and I can make it amazing. Another thing is practice self-control. See, I used to have no self-control at all. And this would show up in my emotions. I was a very aggressive person. Like uh, when I was younger, I would yell all the time, everything because obviously it's my environment that's the only thing i saw yelling aggressive i thought like that's the way i should get my point across so in my home like i would yell to my siblings i would be very aggressive as well i i could not control myself around food so i started to get a, uh, a binge eating disorder uh, bulimia like really it got so bad right when i started to practice self-control 
And I was actually like, no, you know what? I am not going to get aggressive. I am not going to let my emotions get control of me because I control my body. I am not going to eat all this food that I cannot handle in my stomach and my stomach is about to explode because I control what I put in my body. I am not going to listen to things negatively on the news or things that drain me or make me feel even more stupid. No, I will control myself and I will actually decide to listen to something that will educate me because I have control over my mind. I have control over the things that I watch. I have control over the things that I eat. I have control over everything that I decide to do. The more I started to practice self-control, and I'm not saying that it was an easy thing. No, I relapsed many times. Many times I fell, but I got up again. But every time I could control myself and whatever I do and my decisions, I started to feel very confident about myself. It raised my self-esteem like nothing else. Because I could actually be like, oh, Liz, you are a person that control that can control herself. So then when it was another time for me to make a decision, I could make that decision with more confidence because I had shown myself already that in the past I had made good decisions. I had controlled myself about certain aspects in my life. So I try start to trust myself about it. Do what others are not doing. I was watching this interview of David Goggins and um, he basically said it's so easy to be great these days because other people are not doing anything. It is really only a small amount of people that take that leap of faith and that can actually become successful no matter what the odds are because they have tunnel vision on their goals and they actually go for it. Other people do not have that courage. Other people do not want to heal. Other people do not want to go to the gym. Other people do not want to like um, control themselves, not go out all the time, like um, not abuse substances. No, they constantly like, they go for the easiest way out. Everyone wants the easiest way out, what is comfortable to them, allowing toxic people constantly to drain them. But then you have the people that are like, you know what? I don't want this, any of this anymore. I am actually going to do what's best for me. And I'm actually going to start taking responsibility for what is happening in my life. This kind of people are the people that actually start to do what is uncomfortable to them. They start not allowing toxicity anymore. They see the red flags. They say, no, I'm sorry, you cannot come in. Do they feel lonely? Absolutely. It's lonely like this. You know how lonely it is? to get treated with respect. You don't have a lot of people around you because not a lot of people are willing to respect you and you have to accept that in life. So you have to be like, you know what? Either way, I'm gonna have tons of friends, but they gossip about me, spread my secrets around, do whatever, or I'm gonna have tons of tons of relationship where I don't feel valued, I don't feel respected, and then you will feel uh, self, less uh, of self-worth and everything. Or you step back and you're saying, you know what, no. I know I'm going to be lonely. It's okay. It's only for a while. But at least the people that will be in my life will be quality people. It's easy to choose. Oh no, I'm just going to do what uh, was done to me. I was abused. I will abuse. Um, I will do the same thing. I will live in a victim mindset. That's so easy. It's very, very hard to take yourself out of situation, look back at it and say, you know what? I need therapy. I need to fix myself. I need to journal because there are aspects about myself that ha that because of what happened to me, I became this person. I am not my trauma. You are not your trauma, but it did shift you in a way. And when you can take accountability for your own toxic traits and say, hey, you know what? I am willing to work on this because I will not hurt people in the same way I was hurt. That's courageous. But when they say like um, um, practice outworks talent when talent is not working, that's so true. That is so true. The people that want something bad enough and keep working and keep striving towards it, they be actually become successful. When talent is lazy, your talent doesn't mean anything. You do not need to prove yourself. I grew up in an environment I constantly needed to prove myself to my parents constantly. I constantly needed to reinforce that I was a good child. 
I was doing great. Um, I was not lying constantly again and again. So when I grew up, I did that with the same with my friends. I did, um, even when I started off uh, on social media I, with my um, people that were criticizing me, I would argue with them, prove that I was right. But I realized I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I know in myself that what I'm doing is a good thing. I know that I'm helping millions of people. And I am no, I know what I'm doing comes from my heart and I truly have good intention. That's it. That is good enough. I don't need to prove anyone anything. Oh, this is what I meant, whatever. No. Anyone that wants to hear me correctly will hear me correctly. Anyone that is here to hear me, but then to later hate on me and say that what I'm saying is wrong or whatever, I cannot change their mindset. So I don't need to prove myself. They're not willing to hear me, these people. So I'm not willing to talk to them. Very draining to constantly prove yourself. It's very draining to explain to people why you think this is a good thing. No, you don't have to explain yourself, not to your parents, not to anyone. If you're, what you're doing is actually a good thing, then actually just shut up about it and do it. And let your actions speak for you. But don't constantly talk about it and then don't, don't, if you don't have actions, no one take, will take you serious. No one will. No one will believe that you can actually do it. Show them the results. Do not talk about it. Show them how great you are. Realize when people are disrespecting and manipulating you. I never realized this. Like I never used to realize when someone was being disrespectful or bullying me or promising me stuff, but never delivering, which is manipulation. So I always thought like, oh, this is just normal. People are just like that because that's how I grew up. But when I like uh, came out of that and now I look back, now I can firmly see when disrespect is happening. When I can be like, oh, that was not nice. No, 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 you crossed me here. I can actually see that. Start to realize when you said to someone, hey, listen, I do not appreciate it when you treat me like this. And they constantly keep treating you like that. This person is disrespecting you and your boundary. And somebody tells you, oh, you will get this from me. I'll promise you this and all these things, but they never deliver. This person is manipulating you. You get hurt by a situation and you tell them, hey, listen, what you did really hurt me. And they're telling, oh no, you're being sensitive. You're being dramatic, whatever. This person is gaslighting you. Start realizing this is not normal behavior. There is no respect here. You're the one that's being disrespected. And when you see something like this happen, actually step back and say, I will not allow you to treat me like this. Do not constantly give in and just forgive them and forget about it because they will constantly do it again and again and again until you will be at your breaking point. No, unless you see changed behavior and actually them putting so much effort into changing, you can say, okay, I will allow you back into my life. Start to realize that it is sometimes better to be lonely. I was really like a couple months ago at a point where I was like, I feel so lonely, even though I do have a relationship, it's not, it's not good enough, you know? I want friends, my family, none of them live where I live. Um, so I felt really lonely. So then I was like, I want to make friends. And being in my position, I have many times had people that just when they meet me, they want something from me, which is also, again, it's not nice. It's not a nice feeling. And I am not anymore in the position where I will allow someone to use me. Because I am firm on my boundaries, I became lonely. And I remember I was asking God, like, God, please, like, I'm so lonely. I just want friends. I literally even cried about it. Then I went back to my uh, hometown to visit my family and stuff. And then I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in a while. And she told me all these things about the friend she just made and all these things. And then the, that, the things that this girl did to her and stuff. And she was telling me all this drama and everything. And I was honestly, I was shocked. And then I realized like, I am so blessed that the only thing I have to worry about is literally my partner, my family, my cat, and I am good. I do not have any outside drama, nothing. I don't hear none of this, no. I'm really good. 
it's insane to me that people actually live in an environment where where people that claim to be your friends can cross you like that came back and i was literally being like thank you god that i am lonely because it's so much better to be lonely than to be surrounded by people that do not have the best interest for you choose discipline over motivation motivation means nothing to me motivation can maybe one day two day one week maybe you know it will linger around then you have to rewatch the motivation again because you need it again you know it means nothing discipline that's how people become successful discipline you do the things because you're like you know what this is my goal i have to do it do you guys think that i actually want to go to the gym all the time no not at all do you guys think i want to do yoga no not at all do you guys think that i want to read books all the time not at all even like i'm starting to learn a new language now you think i want to do that no not at all i don't want to do any of that but see i can choose to not do it and be a loser or I can actually be like, no, you know what? I'm a winner and I'm going to do things even though I don't feel like it. But for me, I do things without thinking about it. I just go to yoga. I just go to the gym. I just read my book. Even if it's one chapter, I just read it. Or sometimes I just look at a page. I'm, I'm not even, I'm just looking at it. But at least I open the book. I just do things without thinking about it. And that's how little by little i become more successful every single day surround yourself with winners by this i do not mean surround yourself with only successful people that have money whatever no you know what winners are it's people with a winner mentality people that can actually say hey you know what maybe today i am not there but i am going to get there people that actually uplift you People that actually are like, you know what, Liz, let's go. Like, let's do this. That is a winner mentality. People that don't uh, that don't crumble by one single thing that happens and they're like, oh no, I'm done. I'm never going to do it again. No. Winners are people that are, you know what? I had a bad day today. Tomorrow is a new day. We'll do it again. Maybe the day after will be a bad day again. After that, I'll do it again. Those are winners. Surround yourself with people with that mentality. I tend to attract people in my life, uh, especially in my friendships, that, that need help, that need someone to rescue them. So I am always willing to give that. I'm always willing to give out help, advice, everything. But you know what happens at the end of the day? I am not evolving. I, I really start to surround myself with people with the same mentality as me that are like, yeah, Liz, let's go. We're going to get this. We're going to get this. And that way... I feel more confident and I feel like, oh yeah, what I'm thinking is normal because they think like that as well. And together we can flourish. But if I have someone constantly pulling me down, like, Liz, help me, help me, help me. But they don't want, they don't want to help themselves. Then I cannot go further. Realize that you might be running from something. I find it very um, suspicious when people like every single night they go out, they go drinking. Um, they go to the clubs, they, um, they constantly like uh, go like watch reality shows. They, they do, they like even, even overeating, right? And indulging in food, what I used to do. You're running from something. Something is there that you're not willing to deal with. You see, you know when I really overcame my uh, binge eating disorder and my eating disorders? When I started to heal my trauma. I am telling you, nothing helped me more than me working on my traumas. Because once I worked on my traumas, I did not feel the need anymore to stuff myself with food. Because I could actually sit and be comfortable with my emotions. It was a complete shift. And now even I look back today and I think, how could I ever treat myself like that? How did I ever treat my body like that? But it was because I was running from something. I was not willing to deal with those emotions. I would rather stuff them down to the point where I cannot breathe than just look at them and say like, no, you know what, Liz? It's gonna be hard, but you're gonna deal with that. So really realize, look at yourself and think, am I running from something? Am I running from myself? 
what is wrong like why do i need to constantly go out why do i need to constantly go drinking why can i not sit with myself what do i feel uncomfortable about start to think about this i want you to realize you are not your trauma you are not your trauma i used to think right when um when I was growing up, oh, I am a person, I don't have self-control. Uh, I'm an aggressive person because I always yell at my siblings, whatever, I lash out. Um, I, I, I'm literally like, I am this kind of person, right? But then now I can sit back and realize, no, that was my defense mechanism towards what happened with me. I am not that person today because I actually healed what was done to me and I know how how you may think that it's unfair that what whatever happened to you you don't want to deal with it because you feel like why should I deal with something that I didn't do to myself but honestly if there's one thing in my life that was so liberating it was actually going to therapy actually starting healing myself and I will make a separate video how I healed my trauma Honestly, it changed my life. It changed myself completely. I'm a very calm person now. I'm a very well accomplished, successful person. Thank you, God. I am a person with so much strength now. I am a person with so much wisdom. Even like in the interview uh, that I was watching from David Goggins, that abused children have advantaged over non abused children because from a young age, they have been taught to get tough, you know, they are learning lessons from a young age. So we think differently as well. We see the world in a different manner, but we can thrive hard as well. Put us in, an, in a stressful situation, honey, we will thrive on another level. I'm telling you, you like you guys don't get it. Like what you, what you went through, that doesn't have to be your life you can actually decide, you know what? It's so hard what happened, but I will actually turn that around and change it into something that is good for myself. And so I can show other people as well in my family that went through the same thing. You know what? You can do the same thing as well. You know how hard it is for people watching this that are going through this right now how hard it is to live in that situation. I promise you, if you start believing in yourself, if you start speaking up for yourself, and if you actually start caring for yourself, you will thrive on a whole different level. I promise you that. Because honestly, if I could do it, me, anyone can do it. I promise you that. And I want you to remind yourself over the hurdles you have overcome in your life already. This is how strong you are. You have dealt with bigger issues before. Things maybe you thought you could not get out of, but yet you still got out of it. You still got up and you still continued with your life. This shows how strong you are. I came so many times in my life so close to dying, like so close to lo losing my life. And I thought that was it. But yet I still overcame that. I overcame so much abuse. I overcame so much like people always putting me down that now I can look back and I sit and I can literally say, Liz, whoa, like, damn, I'm so proud of you because you went through all that and you're still standing and you choose to not be like that. You chose to work on yourself and you chose to stop generational trauma because my children, I promise you one thing will not go through this. It will end with me. I have hit rock bottom in my life. I will not ever be there again because I'm a changed person. My mentality is completely different. How I handle things are completely different. The way that I go about, if I had things I have had now even to test me, because God does this. God likes to test you, right? He likes to test how evolved you are. So you had maybe a toxic friendship in the past. You dealt with that and you moved on. What he does is he will give you that same toxic friend again, just to test how you will handle it. 
And then you can decide to say, either you make the same mistake again, or you say like, oh no, 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 I have seen this before. This will not happen again. If you had a toxic relationship in the past and you see the signs again of a toxic relationship, you can look at it and say, this is the same. I will not go through this again. Because that way, God sees that you're serious about what you want and you're serious about your change. So he will give you what is meant for your highest good. He will give you what is actually meant for you and he will bless you beyond measures. I would sit and ask God for things that were this small. I'm laughing today because I would ask for things that were this small. I would pray and be like, please, please give me this. And he would never do it. He would never give me those things. And then I got so angry and upset. But the way he blessed me, and I'm telling you, I had to go through so much pain first in order to get blessed. Because I had to get tested first. I would not be able to have this knowledge today if I did not go through what I went through. So you did not waste those years. Those years are meant to make you a warrior. You will come out of this so strong. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you, you, you guys, everyone that's watching this gets blessed beyond measure. I hope you get everything your heart desires in this world and i just know that you know what if you set your mind to it you can accomplish anything thank you so much for watching i love you guys so much bye bye